Welcome back to this YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Bobin. So today we are going to be talking about the theory of demand. Or let me just say today we are going to begin our discussion on the theory of demand. Now, it's not actually a difficult thing, right? So you must have come across demand and supply before. And then they are so central to the study of economics, right? Because, of course, human beings, our attitude, our reward systems and everything are being regulated by um, the invisible and otherwise known as a price mechanism. All right, so for now, currently as we speak, we have about seven classes or seven lessons to undergo um, under the concept of demand and supply. So the thing is that um, there are little things that students may not be taking note of that they may you know, begin to learn or understand in this particular class. So once again, welcome back to this channel and I hope you have a very good time. So what then is demand? Let's start from there. So in this class, we are going to be looking at um, the definition of demand the difference between demand and wants, right? And then we're also going to be looking at individual demand schedule, uh, market demand schedule, individual demand curve, market demand curve. And then we're also going to be looking at, um, I think the, I think what else? I think, um, I think the law of demand. Yeah, the law of demand. So what is demand? Demand refers to the quantity of goods and services, the quantity. So that is very, very important. So demand refers to so under demand, we, are, we have important things that we are looking at. So the quantities of goods and services, the quantity, quantity of goods and services that a consumer, that a consumer is willing. So there is willing, consumer is willing and able to buy, willing and able to buy, willingness to buy, ability to pay, as willing and able to buy at a given price and at a particular time. So demand is the quantity so you don't define demand and say demand is when somebody buys demand is not time so when you say when you're looking at time it's not time right so demand is the amount of goods and services that a consumer is willing and able to buy at a given price and at a particular time so then what differentiates demand from want a want is a mere wishful thinking right and a want is just a mere desire right i am in this class i figured that my phone probably falls somewhere and then the camera is broken, right? So I have to like begin to like, so I, I may, I may be wishing, right? I may say, okay, how oh, I wish I have um, um, a, an iPhone XR at this point, or let me just, I wish I have maybe a Samsung Galaxy A, whatever, right? That can, you know, take better pictures and better videos and all of those things, right? So that is just a wish, right? That's just because I don't even have the money to pay for it right now. And to be very honest, I'm not even willing like how it's something that is desirable right but it's not as if i'm not willing to pay for it anyways right so that's what we're saying so demand is talking about okay, you want something and then there's the ability to pay for it and then there's the willingness to pay for it right but then want is just desire like you would have something that you'd have preferred to have but then it is not backed up by your willingness to pay and then your ability to pay as well so that's just the difference right so after that we then move into what we call individual demand and market demand. So the definition for ind individual demand is same as the definition for demand, right? So which is just saying that um, an individual demand is the demand for goods and services by a consumer, like one consumer, because it is individual, by a consumer at a given price and at a particular time, by a consumer. But for market demand, so market demand refers to the um, total quantities the total quantities of goods and services that all the consumers of a product are willing to buy at a at um given prices and then at a particular period of time so what then is the difference okay so i want about um let's say i want um maybe four bags of rice that is my individual demand for bags of rice so let's say the bag of rice was seventy five thousand. my friends just went to get a bag and then that's the price so a bag of rice is seventy five thousand, and then let's say we get four. We didn't get four, to be honest. We are not food. Uh, I don't know. We are not good things in my house. We are, it's not as if we are selling things, right? So, but then let's assume that we got four, um, or let's assume that I am the one getting four, right? So I want four bags of rice at seven thousand, at seventy five thousand naira each. So when does it become a market demand? So let's say there are just four people that are interested in buying bags of rice. So the first person. So for me. For me, at the price of seventy-five thousand, 
right i want four bags right point is measured in bags but there are some other people right that at the same price so this is me then let's say there is um tolu so at the same price at um um okay let's predict this is price uh okay at the same price on five thousand so tolu wants three bags of rice and then there is amarachi right so amarachi wants at seventy five thousand i'm amarachi might be a retailer of the product so amarachi wants let's say 100 bags so this is quantity in bags so for each and every one of us right we have our individual demand uh, individual demand so this is our individual demand right so and because we are arranging this in look at look at it we are arranging it in a table like in a tabular form no this is not here in a tabular form so oh uh, okay i was meant to have my price price and quantity so because we are arranging the three of them in a tabular form we call them individual demand schedules individual demand schedules so individual demand schedule is the tabular representation individual demand schedule is the tabular like in form of table it is a tabular representation of you know the amount of the quantity of goods and services that a consumer is willing to buy at given prices so let's say at the price of 75,000 I want four bags if the price were to like go to like 60,000 right I mean say that okay I want six bags right so an individual demand schedule because they're still talking about me just me an individual demand schedule then says that it is an individual demand schedule is a table right that shows the different quantities four and six of goods and services in this case is a good right this price and bags of goods and services that a consumer is willing and able to buy at given prices or at their corresponding prices the point of goods and services that a consumer is willing to buy a consumer at their corresponding prices and at a particular period of time that's an individual demand schedule right then from there we now move into what if we sum up the demand for all of us so and we are the only the three of us are the only ones consuming that are interested in buying bags of rice from the manufacturer of rice so in that case um let me put sixty thousand here too so at sixty thousand this person probably wants one it's not like he likes rice that much but let me just say two he wants two bags and then at sixty thousand of course um no at sixty thousand it should be one it should be wanting more please so let's say he wants um four right and then at sixty thousand this person wants one thirty so the retailer wants one thirty okay so now what are we um doing here um when we sum up the individual demands what we have is the market demand so the difference between individual demand and market demand is that i think i've stated it that for market demand it is the it is the sum right the sum of you know the goods and services that all the customer all the consumers the sum okay the market demand is the sum of all the goods and services that all the consumers of a particular commodity are willing and able to buy at a given price as given prices and um as a particular period of time so if we take that and then we extend it into what a market demand schedule is because there's a market demand schedule so a market demand schedule would then be a table so in that case so we can just have markets our market uh, demand schedule so the price um for price we had them um, just two prices seventy five thousand and then sixty thousand so for me uh, which is q1 I, I prefer four and six for the second person q2 uh like person okay quantity that is person he wants three and four and for for the third person, um, one on one hundred and one thirty. So from this, how do we get? So this is our final market demand uh, schedule. So we just have the price here, seventy five 
thousand and sixty thousand. So we just sum up four plus three is seven plus hundred one oh seven. One oh seven. So this is the market demand. Let me call it QM. Then we have um uh six plus four ten plus one forty. So that's just it. But I could have just done the sum here. I could just put Q here, and this will be one zero seven. And this is going to be one for see if my calculation is correct. So this is a market demand schedule, right? Which is a table that shows the different combinations of uh, that uh, a table that shows the different quantities of which that shows the sum, the sum now. A table that shows the sum of all the quantities of a good or a service that all consumers of a particular product are willing and able to buy at given prices right and at a particular period of time so that settles market demand and uh, market demand schedule market demand itself as a concept the market demand schedule um, individual demand as a concept and individual demand schedule right so the um, next thing I will now go to is the graph right so you can plot this on a graph right? you can plot the individual demands on a graph and then the market demand on a graph so when we convert the table into a graph, we then call it demand curve, right? So for the individual demand curve now, it is a graphical representation. Remember that the individual demand shared was a tabular representation. So for your individual demand curve, you'll be having a graphical representation of the different, you know, of the quantities of goods and services that um, a consumer is willing and able to buy at given prices and at a particular period of time. Yeah, so when we just convert, when we translate this, and when you are drawing the demand curve, when you are drawing the demand curve, um, this is P, P is going to be on this axis, price and a point there. So the first, um, we had uh, 75, let me say P is in 1000, so I got, I'll just write 75 here, and then I'll put 60 here. So for me, at 75, I was demanding um, um, 4, okay, let me put my 4 here. Four of these products, and when the price fell to sixty, and I started buying more. So this is six. So I just do it. I just have this like this. So this is D D. That's my demand call, right? So that's so. This is my demand call. So we just title it. Um, God means demand call or the teacher's demand call for rice or bags of rice. That's the proper title. So you have to like properly title it. Okay, and then. The units, if this were like maybe an examination, so this is going to be in bags, in bags, and then this is going to be in, in naira. So then your origin, whatever. Oh, I don't know why my graphs are always like this. So this is four, and then coming down here, we have six. Okay, so how about the um? Market demand. So I'm going to do something here. I'm going to draw the three demand. I'm going to draw the four demand curve. So because we have three, and then we have the final one, which is the market demand curve. So let me just. Uh, um, I shouldn't have brought this here. I, I just. I just think I should. I was wishing that I had the power to move it. So I'll just do a rough sketch. Seventy-five, sixty. So here at seventy-five, I wanted four. At sixty. I want six. So this is my demand curve D. That's my individual demand. Then the second person uh, at the price of 75, he wanted how many? Three. He wanted three. So three could be here. Oh, okay. Three could be here. Then at the price of 60, he wants, um, is it four? He wants four. So not much of a difference. You want four, right? So then I draw this here, D, D, and all this D2, D2, since we have different people, right? And then this is D1, D1. And then for the third guy, um, 75, and then 60. So at 75,000, you wanted a hundred, which is a lot. We're going to be using the same skill. 
a hundred can be here. Uh, it's even meant to be like far more than that, but like that is your board. So, and then for 60, he wanted 130, something like this. 130. Okay, so we draw the, the, so I was trying to like, see if I could draw the mark the man just beside all of them. But now I can't, I can't put it there. So this is D3, D3. Okay, so for the matter of the map now, well, it has to be the bigger one, and because the values are large, so at the price of 75, so using the same scale, like I'm doing something there, that's what I'm trying to like, I'll just show you something. So we have um, 107, 107, and the price fell to 60,000, 60,000, and then this is going to be, like uh, 140, 140. Okay, so by the time we draw it, the so this is DM, DM, not defensive midfielder, please, but football lovers. Okay, so that's the market demand. So, like, do you have any observations? Okay, you see that one thing I want you to note is that for us to get the market demand, what did we do? Did we sum up the prices? No. The price here is the same as the price here, right? But how about the quantity access? So if you look at it, 4 plus 3 plus 100 gives us 107. 6 plus 4 plus 130 gives us 140. So that is why market demand call is the horizontal summation of the individual demand curves. That is market demand curve, this is horizontal axis. This is the vertical axis. So what you did was you had to sum up the horizontal axis, the values there, the horizontal axis to get the values that are going to be having for your market demand curve. There is no sum here because you are using some of the prices, right? So a market demand curve is the horizontal is of is derived. No, we are the horizontal summation of the individual demand curves. That's what I want you to get again, right? So a curve is a graph, a shadow is a table. Okay. Then, um, if you look at something, which is, I think, that's the last thing that we should be talking about in this particular class, before you have your assignments. Um, okay, so here you have the law, um, once you look at something, if you were to go to the market, for example, and then the price of something was higher than what you thought it was supposed to be, what would you likely do? Don't lie. What would you likely do? So, for example, like, me, let's say the initial price had even been 60,000, then I was willing to buy six bags of rice. But then got into the market because what even happened today was even similar to this. Not that I wanted to buy more bags, but like the last time we started walking towards a bag of rice, the price was 65,000. And that was about last week and two weeks ago. And, and then this week, just because of something else that has happened in the economy, the price has jumped up to 75,000. And then let's even assume that I wanted to buy about two bags before. And so, like now, we have, we have like cut back or go and look for more money to be able to buy, you know, the number of bags that I want to buy. So, under normal circumstances, right, if there's an increment in the price of a product, people buy less of them, right? And then if there is um, a reduction in the price of a product, people likely buy more of them, other things being equal. So, that is what the law of demand is saying. Now, okay, when other, um, other things being equal, the higher the price, that is the price went from 60 to 75, all that things being equal, the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded, right? And the lower the price, as the price is coming down, the higher the quantity demanded. So the first thing is all that things being equal. So that's what you're going to be observing all of the three tables. That's okay, look at this one too. When the price, you know, went to 75, you started buying less. If you started by 100 compared to 130. So normally speaking, like the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded, and the lower the price, the higher the quantity demanded. Other things, it is very important to put other things being equal. Let me tell you why. Now for um, today, using the bag of rice that my friends just brought in uh, as an instance, the intention was to buy a bag of rice, right, for 65,000. They got to the market or they did, they called some, the market sell a uh, woman, and then she said the price of the bag of rice has gone up to 75,000. 
they should have maybe gone back or maybe bought half bag but we still bought one bag so what has happened so the law of the man let's go back to the law of the man which states that all that things being equal the higher the price the lower the quantity demanded the other things being equal but the issue here is that all that things are no longer equal right because first and foremost before they step that my friend that one of them actually come and meet me if the, i had additional cash that we could use to do something right so which means that the amount of money that we budgeted for this thing is no longer equal as this look at all that things being equal right so that means all that things are constant so the amount of money we budgeted for this thing is no longer constant we are changing it right which is one then number two is that it is necessary we've already made up our minds that we are going to buy this thing today so even with the increment in price we still have to buy it so which is to also tell you that other things are not equal some things have changed right there is a strong factor which is this factor of time we are all around today due to a break um an international break workers day and so we made up our minds this is when we are going to buy it in fact we don't really have price at home again you understand so it is necessary for us to get it today so there are stronger factors affecting our demand for the bag of rice besides price do you understand so if price happens to be the strongest factor then the law of demand is going to hold that's what i'm trying to like let you know from here but if there are other factors that are stronger than the impact of price then the law of demand may not hold so in that case it's not going to be other things being equal again because there are now factors that are stronger than the impact of price so that's just it so um i think that's not about that the question that i was meant to give you as an assignment was for you to sketch the individual demand curves of the particular data set um i think should i still give you a data set let, let me see let's see let me see give you a data set and then from there you just draw um the uh, market demand and should you do that don't bother no assignment no assignment so um in the next class we are going to be talking about change in demand and change in quantity demanded okay maybe you could research on factors affecting demand should you Okay, let me give you about um let me just mention them um factors affecting demand if you want to go and buy something what are the things you put into consideration of course price of the product like that's the first thing so factors factors affecting demand so number one price of the product ah, of course if I'm for, yeah, price of the product. So if the price is high, like ah, you will likely not buy. And if the price is low, okay, you likely buy. That's one. Then number two, taste. Your taste. So if it's a product that you like so much, even when there's an increment in price, you may still buy it. Do you understand? So taste. Then then what else? Um, your income as well. So even if the price of the commodity is not that bad, you can, um, can you afford it? So that's the point. Can you afford it? So cell uh, number three, you have income of the consumer, income of the consumer, then availability of substitutes. That's number fourth one. Are there substitutes? So instead of buying rice, whatever, are there things that we could have bought instead of rice? So if there are other things that we could have bought instead of rice, then we would I mean likely not go for rice. So availability of substitutes and then um, um have a convenience but well, sometimes you don't buy things because sometimes you buy some things because of convenience like not that you don't have substitutes like it might cost you more to get the substitute or maybe it does maybe you don't feel like stepping out of your house and then just order something or just i don't know maybe ask a friend to buy instead of you going out to go and buy something by yourself then a friend of yours is going out and you ask the person to buy it and then the person calls you and says the price is higher than what you budgeted for. And then you know somewhere that you could, you know, get at the lower price, but that is not the route that your friend is taking. I mean, just, just buy it, just buy it. And hasn't happened to you before, like, just buy it and come home. Like, next time, I'm going to look for my other customer. So, like, I just wanted to, like, think, you know, properly and um, just come up with several other factors. So, I think the assignments may now be for you to, like, um, look at uh, how does, um, Products. Okay, let uh, okay. Let me do something. Yeah, so let's just um, take a look at this simple assignment. Explain how the following factors will likely affect your demand for Coke. Explain how the following factors. Coke is a drink. Yeah. So um, I mean Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. 
Okay, so a customer reviews. So how did the customer review my effects of the month for Coca-Cola drink? Then the product's quality, expectation of a price change in the future. Expectation of a price change. Like I want to say, I need to explain that. Expectation of a price change in the future. Then D, a scientific revelation on the danger of drinking Coke. A scientific revelation on the danger. Let's say come just makes a publication, right? And started analyzing dangers of drinking Coke. Then E, customer relationship management of Coke as a brand. So right, so yes, how can or how might that affect you know, your demand for Coca-Cola as a soft drink? Yeah, so that's it. Next slide, so we'll be looking at change in demand and change in quantity demand. It's confusing students a little bit. I don't really know why. Right, hopefully it's going to be very clear in the next class. Thank you for attending. See you then. Have fun.